Hello and welcome to Crime Watch Daily Updates. I'm your host, Anna Garcia. Some couples who engage in nefarious activities liken themselves to Bonnie and Clyde, the infamous bank robbing couple. But what people forget is that Bonnie and Clyde ultimately did get caught. This brings us to another criminal couple, Benjamin and Erica Seifert. Benjamin, who was a former Navy SEAL, and his wife, Erica, took a little vacation to Ocean City, Maryland, over Memorial Day weekend of 2002. While they were there, they met Martha, who goes by the name Jeannie Crutchley, and Joshua Ford. One day during their trip, Benjamin and Erica didn't have the correct fare when they got on a bus, so Joshua offered to pay for their trip. Joshua, Jeannie, Benjamin, and Erica became fast friends and all went out to a bar that evening. Then they took the party back to Ben and Erica's condo in what would ultimately be a fatal decision. Back at the condo, the two couples drank and hung out in the bathtub. Then Erica claimed that her handbag went missing and blamed Joshua and Jeannie, but it was all fake. Benjamin pulled out a gun and shot Joshua as they locked themselves in the bathroom. Benjamin kicked down the bathroom door and opened fire. Jeannie and Joshua did not survive. Erica and Benjamin dismembered their bodies and then drove to Delaware to get rid of the remains. Benjamin and Erica engaged in other crimes as well. Erica apparently had a history of breaking into Hooters which is precisely what happened about a week after Jeannie and Joshua were brutally murdered. The two were at a Hooters after hours, but somehow they ended up tripping the alarm. Police arrived at the scene and Erica asked one of the cops if she could please have a Xanax from her purse. When the police opened her purse, they found Jeannie and Joshua's IDs bullet casings, and other evidence that directly linked Erica and Benjamin to the killings. They were arrested and in 2003 went to trial separately. Benjamin was convicted of second-degree murder for Jeannie's death and sentenced to 38 years in prison. Erica, on the other hand, was found guilty of first-degree murder for Joshua's death and second-degree murder for killing Jeannie. A judge sentenced her to life in prison plus 20 years. She's eligible for parole in 20. 24. Erica and Benjamin ended their marriage in 2010. In April of 2022, Benjamin's case went before the Maryland Parole Commission, who denied his request for parole. Let's look back at the case of a criminally inclined couple and the brutal double murder that shook Ocean City. They exchange vows to love, cherish, and murder. Benjamin and Erica Seifert were joined together in unholy matrimony. Police say the husband and wife were thrill killers in the making, trolling the trendy bars in the vacation hamlet of Ocean City, Maryland, to quench their thirst for blood. This is a very law-abiding county. We don't have this kind of thing here. By all accounts, the 23-year-old seemed to be a typical middle-class married couple, set to succeed in anything they wanted to do in life. After all, Benjamin was a former Navy SEAL who was number one in his class. As a youngster in high school, he won all kinds of awards on the swim team. And there's one thing about Ben that rings true when you look at his life, and that's that whatever Ben put his mind to, he masters. Erica graduated cum laude with a bachelor's degree in history and political science from Mary Washington College and was a high school basketball star. Her father even built Erica an indoor basketball court so she could practice anytime she wanted. And one of the things that Erica used to do was she wouldn't go in for dinner unless she hit 10 free throws in a row. So she would push herself. Her father would push her. So there was this relationship between dad and daughter that Erica was going to be somebody in sports when she got older. They met in her senior year of college. Three weeks later, the lovers elope to Vegas. She's deliriously happy about their quickie wedding. And in her scrapbook, Erica exclaims, best decision I have ever made. In other excerpts, she writes, you are my sunshine. Here, they're dressed to the nines for a dinner cruise. Through rose-colored glasses, the newlyweds appear to be the all-American couple. 
but dark secrets fueled their marriage. The seemingly upstanding former Navy SEAL had actually been court-martialed for going AWOL and insubordination. His life in a downward spiral after getting booted out of the military. Erica's petite size dashes her hoop dreams of turning pro. She opens her own scrapbook store, indulges in prescription drugs, and in another rather bizarre infatuation. Erica develops an obsession with Hooters memorabilia. They both begin to break into Hooters all over the place. I always describe those two as like hypergolic rocket fuel. By themselves, they're no problem. But when you put them together, they explode. They just bang. They hit it off. One feeds the other's ego, and uh, as lovers, nonstop. Uh, as friends, they're inseparable. As drinking buddies, wow, do, do they party. Investigative journalist M. William Phelps is the true crime author of Cruel Death about the Seifritz. He says they were indeed a lethal cocktail. As drug buddies, boy, do they start doing some serious drugs, and mainly, it's pills and cocaine. That's what their love is. She did have a jealous streak when it came to her husband, yes. Very, very possessive. The Seiferts were always looking for another thrill to keep the party going. Now, they're about to up the ante and get their kicks by killing. Murder became another drug for them because the cocaine, the pills, the drinking, it wasn't working anymore for them. Even the sex wasn't working for them. The Seifreds go on a week's Oceanside vacation and soon lock in on their prey. Insurance executive Martha Jeannie Crutchley and her boyfriend Joshua Ford, a mortgage banker. Joshua is from Boston, a uh, young guy, young 30s, uh, just divorced. Um, Jeannie is older, uh, early 50s, uh, and they hit it off and they just they just loved each other. You know, they weren't married, but uh, Joshua and Jeannie were living together. They started a home, they were gardening. They, you know, they were doing everything couples do that are in love. Jeannie and Joshua met the Seiferts on the shuttle bus to the popular seaside bar, Secrets. Joshua Ford offered to pay their uh, bus fee because they didn't have the right change. And they said, well, we'll buy you a drink at Secrets where they were all going. I think they got together as two couples that met, had sort of hit it off. Jeannie and Joshua hadn't a clue that they were about to raise a glass and party with two homicidal maniacs. And they start to have a party at Secrets. They say, you know what, why don't you come up to the condo with us? We'll continue this party after the bar closes. We got a hot tub, we got some weed, we'll have a couple of drinks, and we'll get to know each other. Do you think that there was a promise of sex? There was something that lured them there, yeah. I, I would think it was sex, yes. And maybe drugs? Yes. It was here in this freewheeling party town of Ocean City, Maryland, boasting breathtaking vistas of the Atlantic Ocean that Erica and Benjamin Seifred were about to play out their ultimate sick fantasy. The couple zeroes in on Jeannie Crutchley and Joshua Ford at this party bar called Secrets. They're lured back to the Seifert's luxury penthouse with promises of a good time. It just turned into a disaster. Benjamin was the stick of dynamite and Erica was the match. And the raw evil of the Seifert's was about to explode. What happens next is a horror show. Music's playing and the drinks are flying and they're in the hot tub. You know, they're having a ball. And something happens. Erica gets out of the hot tub. She goes upstairs and she screams. She says, where's my pocketbook? Somebody took my pocketbook. Right away, Benjamin Seifert gets up out of the tub and he goes to get his 357 Magnum and he points it. He starts waving it around saying, where's my wife's pocketbook? Which one of you took it? In a twisted move, Erica calls 911, claiming Jeannie and Joshua had stolen her purse. Listen to the voice of a stone cold killer. Worcester 911, do you have an emergency? Yes, I have an emergency at my apartment. Um, there are people in my house who I don't know and 
my purse is suddenly missing, and I'm afraid I'm going to have a robbery here. Okay. People in your apartment at this time? Yes. I'll connect you to the police. Stay on the line. Hey. What? I'm I'm upstairs in a bedroom where they don't know where I am. Okay. I'll connect you to the police. You can tell them, okay? Okay. Huh? Ocean City Police. Hello. There are people in... The phone call suddenly cuts out before police can get the address, and cops never respond. All they're doing is messing with these people. That's what they're doing. They're playing a game. It's another thrill for Ben and Erica. Now, the true horror begins. Joshua runs into the bathroom with Jeannie, and he slams the door shut. But Erica smells blood. She leans around from the balcony where she can see the couple cowering through the bathroom window. The Seifritz are a tsunami of evil. Nothing can stop them now. Really, Erica and Ben at this point have gone out of their minds. They're locked in this game, this thrill ride that they want to go on. And the two victims in all of this are in their bathroom now. Eric looks in the bathroom to tell Ben when to fire the weapon. Ben fires the weapon and it goes right through Joshua's head and drops him immediately. Ben kicks in the door. Jeannie Crutchley is crouching under the vanity. She's terrified. Her lover, the man that she lives with, uh, this, this beautiful person has been shot dead. For what? For nothing. Her pleas for mercy merely titillate. The psycho killers cut her down. Maryland Deputy State's Attorney Scott Collins says the thrill kill couple was now facing the task of getting rid of the evidence. Two bloody bodies in their penthouse with no place to hide them. It's Memorial Day weekend. There's 100,000 other people in Ocean City. You're on the top floor of a 20-some story condo and you have two dead bodies. You can't throw them over your shoulder and take the elevator down to the parking lot. The Seiferts come up with a plan to remove their victims piece by piece. He had no choice. They had to dismember these bodies to get them out of there. They were literally dismembering these people inside that penthouse condo. Yes. Ocean City detectives Brett Case and Richard Morick took me to the high rise where the Seiferts butchered Jeannie and Joshua. What else is eerie about this case? Just a lack of remorse or at least a lack of concern and that each day for the suspects after the commission of the crime was just another day in their life. Happy, go lucky, smiling, enjoying Ocean City and going about their business as if nothing ever happened. The body parts are put in garbage bags and carted down to their Jeep Cherokee. They cross from Maryland into Delaware and dispose of Jeannie and Joshua's body parts in dumpsters that wind up in this massive Delaware landfill. What do they do next? They go out and they play miniature golf. The maniacal couple takes a break to smile for a selfie only hours after the slaughter. Look closely at this one. Right there, hanging from the chain around Erica's neck, is Joshua's ring, still caked in his own blood. While the Seifritz are snapping selfies around town, friends of Jeannie and Joshua are starting to worry and wonder what happened to them. It wasn't like for them to just vanish. Not only was it out of character, as I remember, she had never missed a day of work in 20 some odd years. They vanished, and the cops are frantically trying to find them. The Ocean City Police Department wasted no time printing out flyers and posting them all over this beach town. While cops are desperately searching, Erica and Benjamin are covering their tracks. Here he is buying a new bathroom door at Home Depot to replace the one destroyed by a bullet hole. They also grab cleaning supplies to scrub away the ocean of blood in the bathroom. But police say the Seifritz weren't done. They were gearing up for another thrill kill. After the cleanup was complete, they actually had another couple that they brought up to the condominium and played the same type of scenario with that couple. This is the lucky couple, and cops say Melissa Sealing and Justin Todd Wright escaped by the skin of their teeth. One possible reason the Seiferts let them escape was simply they were out of time and had to get back home. Another theory is the couple left before things got out of control. 
It was only by the luck and the grace of God that the two people that they accosted the second time late in the week were able to get out of there with their lives. The Seiferts have pulled off their first thrill kills together. The dismembered bodies have been stuffed in trash bags. Their final resting place, a garbage deposit miles away. These monsters are convinced cops will never connect them to the disappearance of Jeannie Crutchley and Joshua Ford. This is their last, the last time they were seen yes. alive. And if that's not enough, Erica keeps a scrapbook of their evil handiwork, boasting they are the modern day Bonnie and Clyde, showing off souvenirs of their crimes. To scrapbook your life is one thing, but now she wants these victims of murder that she perpetrated to be part of her. She wears a necklace with one of uh, the rings taken from one of the victims. It's still got blood on it. The knife she used to dismember these people is tucked in her pocket. It still has flesh and blood on it. It's one of the most horrific crimes I've ever seen, and I've seen everything. They were certain they'd gotten away with it. They were certain they got away with murder, and they went right back to what they were normally doing, which was petty crimes, if you will, compared to what they had done. But it's Erica's freaky fetish for Hooters memorabilia that leads to their arrest. Just as they were hightailing it out of town, the couple makes one last pit stop to break into a closed Hooters. They trip the store's silent alarm. Police rush to the scene and believe they've just caught two burglars, not two thrill killers. Erica's defense attorney, Archangelo Tuminelli, says after Erica was caught, she flipped out at the crime scene. When they were arrested coming out of Hooters, she became very panicky and asked the police officer for some Xanax that she said she needed that was in her pocketbook. And that moment broke the case wide open. So the officer is obliged, but they're going to look, at the, look through the purse first. In doing so, they, they see five rounds of, uh, spent rounds of uh, 38 ammunition. And next to that is two identification cards for Virginia driver's licenses for our two missing people. Your two missing people. So at this point, it's... At that point, the hair stands up on the back of your neck. In the car with the flex cuffs was gloves and masks. If it wasn't for that moment he saw those licenses, he remembered the photos, he remembered the lookout, and he knew it was the missing people. And this is Joshua Ford's ring. You can see it in the police photograph of her sitting there on the curb is that knife. On her neck is that ring. If it hadn't been for the missing persons flyers and a police lookout alert sent out only hours earlier in the day, the Seiferts would have only faced burglary and theft charges. And worse, they would be free to kill again. Do you believe they had an appetite to kill? Um, I do. I, I believe if if they weren't stopped on this one, there were there were definitely more to come. Erica had told us, of course, that Benjamin did it. Um, and that's where she came up uh, as the innocent, abused wife with this crazy monster that's killing and dismembering people. In this so-called audio confession to cops, Erica plays the frightened witness to the killings. He has seal friends. I definitely would not want him to know that I was here talking to you. And if I go up and testify, and for some reason you guys don't get him locked up, my family will end up like Joshua and Jeannie. Dead. Erica recounts how she says her husband Benjamin killed Joshua Ford in their penthouse bathroom. He made them strip at gunpoint and I was like, oh my God, I, I was like, had no idea what's going on. And he told me that Josh said, I was in the army, you were in the Navy, why are you doing this, why are you doing this? And BJ said that he looked at him in the face and he said, see you later, <laughs> he shot him in the head. Cops aren't buying her tangled tales one bit. They know she was in the thick of it. She was the one conducting the carnage. Jeannie would not have been shot yet. She was just whimpering and she curled up in a ball and he missed her the first time. And the second time he hit her right here. For the record, she's gesturing at her left chest. She had curled up behind Joshua's body. I feel like I'm getting like really pain. Uh, do, you, do you need to take a break? Uh-uh, I'm okay. All right. Just, 
BJ told me she was just whimpering like a baby. Erica acts like she is appalled at all the gore. What do you see in the bathroom? It looks like a bad horror film. There's blood completely soaked everywhere. There are spots that if you stepped, it would splash. There were puddles of blood. And while Benjamin was butchering the bodies in the tub. I'm laying downstairs and I'm like curled up on the couch, just petrified. And I hear him say, come up here. I go up there and he's like, take my picture. And he's holding their heads. Josh's head in one hand and Jeannie's head in the other hand and I want you to take his picture. And what was he wearing? Nothing. Each pointed a finger at the other at their separate trials. The disgraced Navy SEAL claimed he was napping in their Jeep while the carnage unfolded. In the end, Erica was sentenced to life plus 20 years. Benjamin was handed just 38 years because he was never convicted in Joshua's death. The jury believed Erica killed him. I think she was she's the mastermind behind all this. I think, you know, he was the muscle. He did what she asked and you know, he took care of business, if you will. But she was she was the cause of all the drama. I believe Ben and Erica were caught at the beginning of what were going to be probably a serial killing couple. The Seifert's marriage was certainly forged in hell. What is your hope for their families? Well, you, know, you obviously hope that they, they don't have pain, but you know, they think about them every day. They have to, I would, so, but, you know, speaking for the dead, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So uh, we did our best. Seven years after their conviction, apparently this killer couple had enough of one another. Benjamin divorced Erica while behind bars. Now he's eligible for parole in 2021, and Erica will be eligible for parole in 2024.